Hi guys, Dan Cooper here from Pro Tools Expert and in this free tutorial you will learn how to use the UltraTap plugin by Eventide. Now this is a new multi-tap delay plugin taken from the H9 multi-effects box that Eventide do. Originally an algorithm, now in plugin format and it's a very cool plugin. However, when I first started using it I was a little bit confused by some of the controls. Now what I'm going to do is show you each of the controls in a really simple stripped back kind of technical way uh, so that you get to see and hear and understand this plugin a bit better. Now if you want to hear UltraTap in the context of a mix then I strongly suggest that you check out Eli's review over at Logic Pro Expert. He shows this off on some synth lines, absolutely brilliant. But I want to show you how to use this on a very simple snare drum hit example. Now as you see to the right there I've got a snare hit, I've got the example on a one bar loop and you'll see this purple MIDI clip, an empty one underneath that. Now I'm going to be moving this around so that you can visually see when taps start, so the delay, how long they last for, and below that I've got a click track that you should listen out for, again just to help you sort of understand how this plugin works. So over to the plugin, let's start with the most basic of controls. We've got mix, so if it's all the way 100% you're not going to hear the unprocessed signal, in this case being the snare. Mix all the way to the left, you're not going to hear any taps. Let's just put that back. We've got input and output trims and let's start with the pre-delay. Now this confused me a little bit. Uh, I'm going to rename it for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm going to call this tap start and as you can see it's set to none and to the left of that we've got length so how long the taps are going to last for and in between the two we've got taps and we've got this set on four. Now if you look over at the empty MIDI clip here, this purple block, this symbolizes that the pre-delay, so the start of the delay pattern, starts at the beginning of the bar and that the length is four beats long, so a whole bar. And we've got four taps, so you can imagine what this is going to sound like. Listen for the click track. So a really simple four tap pattern there going left and right. We'll get to the panning in a little bit. Now if I increase the taps up to eight. All basic stuff here for delays, multi-tap plugins. So let's adjust the pre-delay length and taps again. So what I'm gonna do is move this empty MIDI block back a little bit to show you that I'm gonna move the pre-delay being the start of the delay pattern to half a bar, so one over two. And the length, I'm going to half this, so instead of being a whole bar, it's going to be half as well. And I'm going to keep taps on eight, so that hasn't changed. Let's play the loop again. Hope you're following so far. So all I've done there is I've kept the same amount of taps, changed the beginning or the start point of the delay pattern, and halved the length. And the algorithm has worked out where those taps should be. So let's move across now to the spread and taper controls. Got them up the middle at the minute so they're not doing anything. If I push spreads to the left, what this will do is bunch those eight taps together more in the first part of the uh, tap length. So let's have a little listen to that. Let's just do the opposite. So now it's gonna bunch most of those taps to the later part of the length of that pattern. Right, so let's just bring that back a little bit so the taps are mostly in the first half. Now, taper. This is kind of going to do a crescendo thing. So the volume, if it's turned to the left here, the volume will go from quiet to loud. Let's just give that a go. Let's do the opposite. Now that does sort of sound like a, a drummer playing a, a pseudo drum roll there, which is quite nice. Now width and tone, pretty self-explanatory. Tone, if we pull it to the left, we're going to get something a little bit more darker in the taps. Twist it the other way, you're going to get something a bit brighter. Now the width control, quite simple. If it's right up the middle, we're going to be getting mono taps, so and if it's to the left, the taps will start on the left and then go to the right, so basic sort of ping pong thing. To the right, starts on the right, 
goes to the left, it's just the opposite. Now the controls that make Ultra Tap quite unique are the Slurm and Chop controls. Now Slurm, the only way I can really describe this is if you want to make your tap sound a little bit more roomy or ambient or less rigid, for want of a better word, use Slurm. So let's keep this loop going around and I'm just going to keep pushing it in so you can hear what this does. You can hear it does something to the attack. There's some modulation stuff going on in there. If I go back to taps now, if I increase this to right to the other end of it, let's go to 64 taps, bring the slurm all the way down, then I'm going to increase it again. Let's put spread and taper back. So we're getting something quite busy there. Now let's use slurm and go for something that sounds a little bit more reverby. So slurm off. Let's increase it. This is where we can use the tone as well. It's quite an interesting effect. Now, chop, this is linked to unused. And I'll try to explain what this does. Um, it helps to kind of add a little bit more of a glitchy kind of effect and it helps take the taps somewhere else completely. So let's put Slurm off for the minute so we can hear just chop, and let's put it in a loop. There we go. So the chop is linked to this extra control here, got it on trigger at the minute and it's changed to release and you can hear that it tightens, sort of gates, gates those uh, delays quite nicely. With the slurm, tone, taper, so we've got that crescendo thing going on, spreads, just bunch those taps earlier. And the mix. Now we've got this ribbon control at the bottom of the plugin. We've seen this in other Eventide plugins like Black Hole, fantastic reverb plugin. But again, also in the H9 algorithms. It's very useful as you can link several controls together and then you can use the ribbon control to do some automation and do some quite weird and wonderful things. So for this, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna set the tone and slurm controls together. So to do this, we set a start point and let's go for tone. I want the tone to start there. We can drag that about, click on the right part of the ribbon. Let's say it can start or finish here. So as I move the ribbon about, you'll see the control changes. It's the same thing. Let's start there, let's go for slurm, Put a start point in, end point, and again, move the ribbon, and it controls both of those controls. So let's hear that in the example. Nice. And you can do this for as many controls as you like in the Ultra Tap plugin. You could do it on all of them if you want, if you were feeling a bit fruity. Anyway, I hope you guys got something from that tutorial. Ultra Tap is a very cool plugin. Go get yourself the demo, have a play for yourself. Don't forget to check out Eli's review at Logic Pro Expert to hear this in the context of a mix. I'm Dan from Pro Tools Expert, and I'll catch you next time.